Greetings to everyone and those watching uh, over the internet and all, everyone, wherever you are. We thank God for, na for another opportunity we are having now to, to study his word. Let us begin because we have little time. Every day that, that passes, things get uh, tighter and tighter, and we are supposed to also get serious with what we're doing. Building the temple, consider your ways, is our, is our lecture today. <clears throat> Let us look at this. Remember in the past lecture, we saw the, uh, the, the, the hour cometh, and we saw that God has set a time for everything in this world, you either finish the time or you shorten it. There's no one who goes past his time. Because some always will say that God added uh, uh, Hezekiah time. But if you go and read, you notice that God had told him to prepare for he was going to die. He could have lived 15 years ahead of time and uh, or, or to, 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 to prepare all that house. But to prepare his house while he's still sick, but he wanted to recover from his illness. We shall have a look at that in the future lectures. So Jesus saith unto a woman, to the unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. And we have titled this Building the Temple. Now, if you go to, let us first define the word to worship. What is worship? That is the Greek word, uh, uh, proskuneo, which, which means uh, to lick a master's hand like a dog does, to fawn, to crouch, to that is prostrate oneself in homage, do reverence to adore, to worship. So it means reverence. And today we hear people when we talk about worship, if the meaning is reverence, then when you hear anyone called reverend, then you are very worried if someone is called reverend, that means this person is called worship. So he's, if he's called the right reverend, then it means the right worshipful master, perhaps, which is, of course, a title in Freemasonry. Because to be reverend, to be reverended or to be reverenced, it means to, to worship or to prostrate people to prostrate before you to pay you homage, which is very dangerous to call every, anyone a reverend. So, so if worship is to give reverence or, ad or adore, so that means we have to understand what this means. If there, if shall no worship, we shall no longer worship in a place. In other words, we shall no longer give reverence to God in a place in Jerusalem or in the mountain. And we saw in the last lecture <clears throat> that uh, both the Jews. The Jews and the Samaria, the Samaritans all had the same mindset that it is either in Jerusalem or in a mountain. And both views were totally wrong. In John 4.21, Jesus is saying to the woman, uh, time cometh when obedience, reverence to God will not be in a place. Okay? So that tells you that God has set a time. If the, the, the Bible says the hour cometh, when reverence or obeisance to God will not be in a place, that means that God has set a time for that for people to start obeying God, not in a place, but to, to now shift to what He wants. And when that time passes, every time God sets a time, when that time is finished, there's judgment for either doing or not having done. 
So let's look at verse Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 17. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. So there is judgment for everyone, the righteous and the wicked. Judgment in favor or judgment against. So it will have to come either way. So whichever one, whichever you choose, it doesn't really. It matters which side you are supposed to be on because that's what is coming. Ecclesiastes 8, 6, because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. This is an interesting verse. Every purpose, there is a time. So God has set a time for every purpose. So you have set a time for worship, to worship him, uh, not in a mountain, and, and that time comes and people continue worshiping in a mountain or, 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 in, or in a hill, then judgment will come. So there is a time and judgment. So if God sets a time, but this time this person should be baptized, please, if you take, if you take that time as a game, judgment cometh. If you knew what, what took you so long, why didn't you act upon it? If you knew the Sabbath, why didn't you act upon it? What took you so long? So that's why, therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. The misery of man is so great upon him because he's joking with what God says. So, Jeremiah 8.20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. What a miserable verse, or what a, a verse that pronounces misery upon people who have had the harvest has passed, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Those are words that are supposed to be given to that to 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 those people who will be in the second resurrection. The scripture above shows that God has set a time for everything to be done therein. If it's not done in that time, probation for it closes. So God has set a time for worshiping in, 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 as people used to have in Jerusalem and in mountains, but that time was finished. As you see in the holy, there was a time for serving there. And when Jesus left the holy, he closed the door and no one can open it. So every time there's always a time that, that God sets for that work to be done. And if it's not done, probation closes for that time, for that period. And enemies who open that door when Christ has locked it, then are in trouble. It's like Israel. They had enough time to move from, from Egypt and to the Red Sea. They had time to go back but once they crossed, there was no going back. Probation had closed. You are either beyond the Red Sea and you will die in there, or you continue to the promised land. So these verses already give us a picture that God has set a time for, for everything to be done in there. So do not take it for granted. Do not play around. God has set a time and we are supposed to live within the time. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, we're looking at God is set times. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end to sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So it shows you that God had already set a time, 2,300 days. Then the sanctuary should be cleansed. But in this period, already he gave some to the Jews, which are Daniel's people, 
and the other time for the Gentiles. So there is already time set. Time has been given for everyone to prepare for the time. So if there was a time given, always God's people are, are, are given the, the priority first. If you look even in, in, in Revelation 11, you'll see that a rod is given to measure the temple, to measure, but it is made to measure the temple and the altar, but the outer court should be left. So judgment begins in the house of God, the temple, his people who are inside. In fact, the, the Greek word there uh, for temple is nahos, which is the inner shrine. So those who are inside in, in Christ's ministry are the ones that are measured. Those ones who are outside are not measured. So you have to be careful that if you're not measured or judged in the first ones, then you have to, say, to wait for the second judgment, which comes after a thousand years, as we shall see. So God's people, even here, were given time, 70 weeks deducted. So the Jews, who are the type, were given 70 weeks to go back from captivity to Jerusalem and do the following one, to finish transgression, make an end to sins, make reconciliation for iniquity, bring everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision and prophecy, and anoint the most holy. So in other words, the, these are things that were given for them to do. So is it possible that even God is charged before the, the, the other people are called upon? God gives, will set, God will set a time for his church, for his people to be, to be ready to first prepare themselves and, and, and work just before the others come in. Why does God tell these people to first go and prepare themselves? Because they are the, the ones he trusts with this truth. So they were to prepare themselves for the coming of the Messiah. Okay? So think, if we think about it antitypically, so is it possible that the antitypical Jews, who, are, who is the SDA church, have a work? and time given to them before the second coming of Jesus. So is there a time that God has set for his people just before he comes to prepare themselves such that by the time he comes, they are ready and they have also prepared others. So there's a time set. Daniel 9, 1, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. So when you look here in the first year of Darius, so Darius is in the first year. Okay, this vision of Daniel 9 is in the first year, which is about the one we read about, the 70 weeks. It was given in the first year of Darius. Now, if we go to Daniel, to Haggai chapter 1, we notice that in the second year of Darius, the king in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet. So in other words, the Jews in Babylon were given a message through Daniel in the first year. Okay? Then, this is the first year of Asodas. Then, in the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, Haggai is given a message. So Haggai is in the second year of Darius. So God sent a message to both. The Jews in Babylon were informed ahead of those in Jerusalem. So, so the Jews in Babylon waited for a time to go back and fulfill their duty. The ones in Jerusalem had everything but were reluctant. So in other words, God sent a message to those in Babylon ahead of time because they had more to do than those who were in Jerusalem. So, but all of them were informed, those in Babylon and those who were 
in 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 uh, in Jerusalem. So and look at the condition of the antitypical Jews. They are those who are in Babylon, and they are those who are home. So we, do we see that there are God's people outside the church who are still in Babylon? and God is calling them, he has already called them, but again, he sends a message to, to his people to prepare themselves for the coming ones who are coming from Babylon. But the people in, Israel, in, in, in the church have something wrong with them. Let's read on. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the wall even in trouble sometimes. So there was a time attached. The wall was to be built even in trouble sometimes. So they had to, to, be, to do all these things fast, even in trouble sometimes. There was nothing to wait. There was no waiting. Why? Because the time had been set. And look at what a wall is. The word here used figuratively refers to eagerness, determination, threshing, pointed. So they were to build the eagerness, preparing themselves even in troublesome times. So in other words, doesn't this sound like preach the word in due season and uh, uh, in, 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 in due season and not in due season? in all times so in other words this was about evangelizing they were supposed to build a, a wall evangelizing taking the message that people may see so even the antitypical jews have a message the message must be preached with determination eagerness and it's pointing to someone and it's judgment it's judgmental threshing that's why it is eagerness, determination, threshing, pointed. So it is the message is pointing to someone and his judgment and, and, and it is sharp and it is, um, it is threshing, which is judgmental and it is determination. So people must be determined in order to do it. That is the word they use there, that they should build the wall even in troublesome times. Isaiah 58 verse 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. So if we look here carefully, God is saying the wall must be built even in troublesome times. So you must not keep quiet just because the troublesome times going on. No, you must not spare not, you must lift the voice no matter what is going on. To the servants of God at this time is the command addressed. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So far as his opportunities extend, everyone who has received the light of truth is under the same solemn and fearful responsibility as was the prophet of Israel to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. Listen carefully, it says, everyone who has received the light of truth is under the, so the same solemn and fearful responsibility. There is nothing like you, you are not supposed to go, you're not supposed to preach, you're not supposed to warn, they are designated people to warn, excuse me, everyone has the same solemn, fearful responsibility, as was the prophet that I have said to thee as a watchman. We are all watchmen as we come, but when we refuse to take that duty, then God assigns it to other people. But everyone is supposed to be a watchman. There's nothing like some people are the watchmen and others are not, and we should wait for the watchman to the watchman to get to tell us what to do. 
whether in COVID or what to do in the church, whether to go back or not to go back. This is un unbelievable. Even what to believe, should we should wait for some people as if none of us is a watchman. Yet the Bible, the spirit of prophecy is saying, everyone has been set as a watchman unto the house of Israel. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, the wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he does not turn from his way, she shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So why, why is this fear of we should not, we should wait. Oh, this message is so sharp. Don't say it. Let us first go through it. No. Warn that person. If the message comes to you and tells you, please warn, go and warn. Please don't keep quiet. Don't wait for, for an invitation or a letter or a permission. It says you go. Such a message is a personal conviction, not a church elect. It's not that you should be elected in the church in order to be in that position. No one was elected to have such a position. It is God who chose and, and gave the conviction. Many get such conviction, but wait for Israel to give them permission to warn Israel. So in other words, you wait until you'll be given a permission to stand and speak before people. So could Nathan wait for the permission to go and warn David of what he had done? Would Elijah first go and ask for permission before Ahab that please, I, there's something I need to warn, please give me permission? Was Amos supposed to go and first seek permission from, uh, from Amaziah, who again was pushing at him? This is unbelievable. This is the, the world we are living in. We have gone insane when, when God calls you and tells you that please go, speak, do not wait, do not listen to anyone who tells you that wait for permission. Why? Because you are under the same fearful, solemn conviction that, uh, and, and, and uh, work that was going to do. That was great controversy. Page 459, paragraph 2. Now, what about what is to build? The temple or the house to be built is here referred to as obtain children. If you look at the word here, primitive root to build, which is literally obtain, like children, make, repair, set up. Build, 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 it shows you here. But I, I liked this one. Obtain, like children. Make, repair, set, set up. Hmm? Which tells you that if it is to obtain children, isn't God telling us that he wants his children to come back, to call them out of Babylon? So in other words, to build is to call people back to him, according to the meaning of the of the word here to build so god's people israel have a duty to bring god's children back home to bring the wandering sheep out there back to the flock the church in genesis 2 16 was to multiply in conception we saw that that eve was told i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in other words the church is supposed to bear children it's supposed to to build because we are all living stones that are built up upon one spiritual rock, which is Jesus Christ. So if we are all lively stones, small stones built upon, that means to build is to gather all those stones which are God's people and bring them back to the building. But for long, this is interesting, these are my notes, but for long, the church gives up the habit of giving birth. We no longer want to bear children. We no longer want to build. Don't you see why they introduced family planning? If it happens in the physical world, is it possible that it can happen in the spiritual world? When, when 
when we no longer want to bring to to bear children because where, where shall they where what shall they eat where shall they stay so we no longer want to do evangelism because we don't we don't have where people shall sit the churches are small and all this nonsense we have so we even introduce family planning into the spiritual matters not speaking unless given permission scheduled evangelistic meeting just as scheduled birth in the world are done this is not building the temple so you can imagine you, you can find a whole organization even within god's people but they also promote birth control within the church that tells you what about in spiritual matters again they will tell you you should not do evangelism until we give you permission you should not do a crusade until we see the board seats and see what to do so in other words the, this this is interesting this is the family planning even within the spiritual matters fascinating what is the temple or house of god see first corinthians 3 16 17 know ye not that ye are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you if any man defile the temple of god in him shall god destroy for the temple of god is holy which temple ye are okay so if we are the temple individuals we are the temple then what temple was supposed to be built isn't it we the human beings Let's go, let's go to Desire of Ages to tell us. Desire of Ages, page 161, paragraph 1. In the cleansing of the temple, Jesus was announcing his mission as the Messiah and entering upon his work. That temple erected for the, for the abode of the divine presence was designed to be an object lesson for Israel and for the world so if we see temples built these are object lessons but they are not they themselves of any significance they're object lessons their types their shadows from eternal ages it was god's purpose that every cre created being from the bright and holy seraph to man from seraphim highest angel to man should be a temple for the for the indwelling of the creator so creatures themselves that were created by god are supposed to be the temples for the indwelling of their creator not these buildings because of sin humanity ceased to be a temple for god darkened and defiled by by evil the heart of man no longer reveal, revealed the glory of the divine of the divine one but by the incarnation of the son of god the purpose of heaven is fulfilled continues god dwells in humanity and through saving grace the heart of man becomes again his temple god designed that the temple at jerusalem should be a continual witness to the high destiny open to every soul so as they watched that temple it was a, 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 a witness to show them what god is going to be or to do in our soul in us but the jews had not understood the significance of the building they regarded so with so much pride so today is the same thing we're just repeating history we look at these buildings and we think they have more value. We, 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 we polish them, we put everything there and we adore them, we even close and we don't permit people to, to, to make them dirty and just go in even we lock them. Not knowing that these are just objects. They did not yield themselves as holy temples for the divine spirit the courts of the temple at jerusalem filled with the tumult of unholy traffic 
represented all too truly the temple of the heart defiled by the presence of sensual passions and unholy thoughts think about what happens in these buildings it's just a display of what happens in people's hearts they're just shadows in cleansing the temple from the world is buyers and sellers jesus announced his mission to cleanse the heart from the defilement of sin from the earthly desires from sin from the earthly desires the selfish lusts the evil habits that corrupt the soul the lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in behold he shall come saith the lord of hosts but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth for he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap and he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of levi the priests and purge them as gold and silver malachi 3 one to three that's what say so god dwells in man there's nothing like having a temple that, that place is holy and that when we, we go there this called this is a holy place excuse me the bible says that is not those were shadows so isaiah was shown this time typically and that typically he writes 58 verse 12 and they that shall be of thee shall build the old west places. Thou shalt rise, raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. So God wants to dwell in people, but the paths that lead to the dwelling are all muddied. They are all hindered. They are all uh buried down they are supposed to be rebuilt there's a building there's a duty for god's people to do the old paths in jeremiah 6 16 have to be rebuilt the ancient way if we if we believe has to be restored today new forms have taken over these have degraded spirituality and many cannot discern even small matters so since they are not, they, they, we are not rebuilding, people cannot see what is coming. People cannot discern why, because the, the pillars are buried, the foundations of many generations are still buried, and, and the paths to dwell in are still buried. Let us see God's message to the Jews in Jerusalem, the, the, the seventh-day the seven Adventists today who have received every opportunity because these are the the jews in jerusalem who the ones that are in church in the church books they're in jerusalem they, they come every sabbath as the jews were the other ones who are in babylon could not even worship because they had issues but look at these people Haggai, hey guy one two four to six thus speaketh the lord of hosts saying these people say the time is not come the time that the lord's house should be built so the thinking the mindset of those in jerusalem was saying no 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 it's not yet time to build yet god had prepared the other people to come back but they were they're coming back these ones are not prepared do you see the situation in the church that Many people want to come in the church, but those who are in Jerusalem are not prepared for them. So they said, no, 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 the time has not come to build the Lord's house. So it is no time now to evangelize. Come on, you can see the conditions. We have COVID, we are being stopped. We are being uh, told not to baptize. Please, the time is not here. Let us first wait until the time is, it comes which is favorable and then we shall do the work but the bible says spare not the wall must be built even troublesome times 
there is nothing like let us wait until their conditions are fine. So do we have the same mindset today among even the leaders? Many stand on pulpits and claim the time of the end is not nigh. They claim current situations have no connection with prophecy. Okay, so they're saying no, no, things are not yet there. So I believe this mindset is antichrist. For Christ says go, but for them they say, no, stay, it's not yet time. When you ask them when the time is, they don't know. They know when it is not to go, but they don't know when it is to go. Don't you see? So they know it is not yet time, but they don't know when, when it is time. They will never tell you. So isn't this Satan trying to hinder the work by telling you not to go and when, when not to go, when to go? They will never tell you. This is dangerous. This is the same mindset that was in, well, God sent through Haggai. That these people are saying, the time is not come. The time is not come. We should wait. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lie waste? Question. Which house are we talking about here? We have read that it is the people. So it, we have wasted a lot of time in buildings, in beautiful synagogues. But Christ is saying, excuse me, I want now for you to focus on human, on individuals. Check every Christian. How much do they know? We, we always get time to, be, to, 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 to have ceilings in the churches and the fans and the offices and the and the tiles down and everything but have we ever examined how much do the people the christians know how much have we built them do they know the law of god how many times have, has the law of god been taught how many sermons have been preached upon the law which is the standard of the entire gospel so we are constructing beautiful synagogues where we sit, but God is people. Where he dwells are not built. We have to go back and check this. Go back to your home. As you build very nice buildings for your children, but have you built the children themselves? You buy nice clothes, but have you built their temple, their minds, and their hearts where Christ will sit? You give them all the foods, but have you given them spiritual food? They are healthy physically, but are they healthy spiritually? This is the call that stop building. You, 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 you say it is time for you to dwell in your sealed houses. Everything is nice. The people look nice. They, they dress well. They have families. They have married. But ask yourself, are is, isn't God's house waste? Are their hearts, aren't their hearts a waste? Look at them. Miserable Christians who don't even know the foundations of their faith. They, don't, they cannot even trace from Eden to where they are. They cannot even tell you how the church comes from the Bible. They cannot. But daily we gather, they pay tithe. All of this is wasted, is wastage. Now, therefore, that saith the Lord of, of hosts, consider your ways. I was always asking myself, what does consider your ways have to do with a, a simple building? I consider my ways for just a building. Oh, now I understand that to consider ways is to examine ourselves and see how many times we have done things for ourselves claiming it's god is the glory of god is not in a building but it is in fruit bearing christians so every time we can come and decorate the church and say we are giving god the glory no we are the ones who will look at it and and, and marvel if we don't clean the, the chairs, it is we who will sit in that. 
and we are the ones to get ashamed if we don't if we sit in that or we are the ones who say oh the, my 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 clothes got that but where the, where is the benefit for god if we don't do all these things those things don't matter what matters is the building of god's people john 15 8 says herein is my father glorified that he bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples interesting so discipleship is about glorifying god when we bear much fruit so you see bearing children be bearing fruit and again this is the character so in other words we're supposed to preach to people and they can bear as well fruit okay so this is the work that has been given to god's people first remember first Kings 6 12 we dealt with this but let us for interest sake look at it again concerning this house this temple which thou art in building if thou wilt walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments and we saw that that includes moral health and all once you have all of them not some of them then will i perform my word with thee which i spake unto david my father thy father and i will dwell among the children of israel and will not forsake my people israel so god wants to dwell in his people by their conditions have we prepared these people for for christ to come and dwell in them have we laid the paths to dwell in we haven't it is about buildings and asking for money every now and then that please bring this and bring this and this project and that project and that project and then we assume that when we do this then the work will be done but god is saying excuse me the focus should be on people how much money is invested can you imagine 400 million sometimes a billion one billion shillings on a building which which people attend once in a week yet god is people where he wants to dwell only once who are, where god will dwell daily they don't even give them a single coin how much should they should we invest in these buildings that christ wants his temples the people to help them many of them are, have, have, been, have been discouraged they no longer come to church just because they are being told to bring money many of them have been discouraged in the faith because of the challenges they find yet we have the money in order to help them overcome them but we are not building them we are const we are putting money in buildings and banks that we are keeping for our accounts god is people perishing Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with the drink. Ye cloth, ye cloth you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth, earneth wages, earneth wages, and put it into a bag with the holes. Wow. So that's why everything we do, when we get the money, things fail. Why? Because we're not building people. We are investing money in buildings. Things where God will not dwell, but things where we shall dwell, then we claim also God is glorified. So whatever we do fails, why? We have neglected God's work. Many things now have taken our attention. The time cometh was said. Now we can say the time is come. It's time now for us to do the work before it's too late. Daniel 9, 24. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, unto the messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and there and this cause the street shall be bu bu built 
again and the wall even in trouble sometimes. So when the time has been set, we have to do the work. Remember, when they decide, the Jews never studied this scripture, in fact, this part, we dealt with it in Daniel 9, 25 to 27, when the Jews did put the rabbis, put a curse upon this text, that whosoever readeth it, let his bones crumble and let his memory rot. So the Jews never attended to this. They never read this scripture in order to find out the time and know how to prepare themselves. And it is possible that even now, many people are reluctant not knowing that the streets are supposed now to be built in trouble sometimes. We are supposed to send the message in this trouble sometimes. This is the time we have. There is none to come. Don't think that things will get better. The Bible tells us things will get worse. For us, we think they will get better in future. Don't deceive yourself. That is vain hope. Vain hope. Five testimony, 454, paragraph two. The Lord called out his people, Israel, and separated them from the world that he might commit to them a sacred trust. He made them the depositories of his law, and he, des he designed through them to preserve among men the knowledge of himself. So every Christian must have the knowledge of God. Through them, the light of heaven was to shine out to the, to the dark places of the earth, and the voice was to be heard appealing to all peoples to turn from their idolatry to serve the living and true God. Had the Hebrews been true to their, to their trust, they would have been a power in the world. God would have been their defense and he would have exalted them above all other nations. Do you look at, read this typologically. Why are we not known? We have not done our work, what God intends for us to do. So we are now trying to build buildings to be known, to, 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 to do some things that people may not know. We are supposed to be known by our message, by living the truth. His light and truth would have been revealed through them and they would have stood forth under his wise and holy rule as an example of the superiority of his government over every form of idolatry. So they were supposed to stand with the truth and practice it, and then the world would have seen the difference. But they did not keep their covenant with God. They followed after the idolatrous practices of other nations, and instead of making their creator's name a praise in the earth, their caste their curse held it up to the contempt of the heathen. Yet their cause, sorry, their cause held up, held it up to the contempt of the heathens. Yet the purpose of God must be accomplished. So whether you do or you don't, God's purpose must be accomplished. The knowledge of his will must be spread abroad in the earth. God brought the hand of the oppressor upon his people and scattered them as captives among the nations. Do we see this same thing? In affliction, many of them repented of their transgressions and sought the Lord. Scattered throughout the countries of the heathen, they spread abroad the knowledge of the true God. The principles of the divine law came in conflict with the customs and practices of the nations. Idolaters endeavored to crush out the true faith. The Lord in his providence brought his servant, Daniel, Nehemiah, Ezra, face to face with kings and rulers that these idolaters might have an opportunity to receive the light. Thus the work which God had given his people to do in prosperity, in their own borders, but 
which had been neglected through their unfaithfulness was done by them in captivity under great trial and embarrassment. Interesting. So we are not, when, when the governments of the world ban these things, and they say you should not say this, the Bible tells us that is the very time we should speak. That is the very time we should come up. God called his church. God has called this church, his church in this day, as he called ancient Israel, to stand as a light in the earth. By the, by the mighty cleave of truth, the messages of the first, second, and third angels, he has separated them from the churches and from the world to bring them into a sacred nearness to himself. He has made them the depositories of his law and has committed to them the great truths of prophecy for this time. Now, this was written then. Now, we we, what we should say is already the time is already passed almost. Like the holy oracles committed to the ancient Israel, these are sacred trust. These are a sacred trust to be communicated to the world. The three angels of Revelation 14 represent the people who accept the light of God's messages and go forth at his, as his agents to sound the warning throughout the length and breadth of the earth. So it is the people themselves who take the message. Christ declared to his followers, ye are the light of the world. To every soul that accepts Jesus, the cross of Calvary speaks, behold the, the worth of the soul. Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Nothing is to be permitted to hinder this work. It is the all important work for, for time. It is to be far reaching as eternity. This is interesting. So God has made us the ones to take the message. Nothing is to be permitted. Do not permit any nonsense that hinders the work of God, just because there are those who, who want to scrutinize it. That time is not now. No prophet in history went for scrutiny. Jonah was, was told by, by God, you go to Nineveh. He could not even explain to his wife what it means. He could not even come back and tell them that, please, the fish swallowed me. It was, it was an experience that only Jonah could tell, but it is something that is unbelievable. No prophet could come and tell, Elijah could not come and tell them that, please, God spoke to me. How? There's no way you could convince people, just take the message, let God speak to his people. This is the time we have. There is no other time. The work which the church has failed to do, in a time of peace and prosperity, she will have to do in a terrible crisis and a most discouraging forbidding circumstances. That is what it said here, that the Daniels, the work which had been neglected through their unfaithfulness was done by them in captivity and a great trial and embarrassment. Same thing is spoken, we are going to do the work because we had time of peace, we failed. We built churches. We were enjoying feasts of this and that. Now, we are going to do the work in terrible crisis and the most discouraging, forbidding circumstances. Why? Because we are sorry. We are so ashamed that we, are, we, we did not do the work. It is now time to work as the ashamed people are, always are. When you are ashamed for not having done the work and, you, and someone finds you not have done the work, you do all you can under any circumstance. That is a testimony for the church. 
volume 5, page 463, and Evangelism 31, paragraph 4. God has called his church in this day, as he called ancient Israel, to stand as light in the earth. So this is the call. But, but very few of those who have received the light are doing the work entrusted to their hands. They are a few men of un, unswerving fidelity who do not study, who do not study is convenience or life itself, who push their way wherever they can find an, op an opening to press the light of truth and vindicate the holy law of God. There are few. There are few men. The, the great majority won't. It is always a few good men. But the sins that control the world have come into the churches and into the hearts of those who claim to be God's peculiar people. Many who have received the light exert an influence to quiet the fears of worldlings, to quiet the fears of the worldlings and formal professors. So in other words, they, they receive the light and start exerting a, a, an influence of the fears of the world. There are lovers of, of the world, even among those who profess to be waiting for the Lord. There is ambition for riches and honor. Christ describes this class when he declares that the day of God is to come as a snare upon all that dwell on the earth. This world is their home. They make it their business to secure earthly treasures. They erect costly dwellings and furnish them with every good thing. They find pleasure in dress and the indulge of appetite. Everything as written here is openly in, in church, in God's people, in Israel. Why? Costly dwellings, buildings. Look at how magnificent churches should be. Dress, indulgence of appetite. You find, you, you, you find that people will fight if they don't even have flesh. They will always fight. You go to a camp meeting and that day is, and, and those hours are delayed in the day when they cook meat, flesh, because people are, have that, have that indulgence of appetite. The things of the world are their idols. These interpose between the soul and Christ and the solemn and awful realities that are crowding upon us are but dimly seen and faintly realized. So when these things are upon us, we faintly realize what God is telling us. The same disobedience and failure which we are seen in the Jewish church have characterized in a greater degree the people who have had this great light from heaven in the last messages of warning. Shall we, like them, squander our opportunities and privileges until God shall permit oppression and persecution to come upon us? So should, should God first bring persecution? No. Will the work which might be performed in peace and comparative prosperity be left undone until it must be performed in days of darkness under the pressure of trial and perse persecution? I believe yes, because there's nothing we can do. You have to wait until the board sits three months. I went one day to, I was invited to do a, a, a campaign in one in Kampala University, and it is a Muslim university. And the, the, the students told me, please come. We have waited from last semester. They tell us, we shall answer, you wait. We shall answer, you wait, until the boys got fed up. The, semester, the, the year was ending. The, they saw fruits are ripening. They need to the waters are flowing, are going of the river, and the, those which flow will never come back. They said, no, 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 we cannot wait. 
please come and do the campaign. And they were asking for a letter. And the boy said, we don't, we, we don't want, we told you, please give us someone. It is now three months, it is coming to now a, a year. Please, we are, we are going, we are going on, we're not stopping. And the preacher is coming and he will preach. So I went under very difficult circumstances. I went to the university. It is a Muslim university. And I, have to give, I had to give a, a Muslim lecture where there was a lot of chaos in the university, almost to stop us and even switched off the power. So you have this thing, you have this battle from within and from without. And when the students were, 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 when were, were, when were completing, we had 19 students to be baptized and we and we told the 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 church that please come and the leaders at, at the nearby church and they said no we are not the ones who organized it we shall not baptize them and 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 we we went and pleaded and pleaded they said okay the pool has no water so we went and 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 started started getting jerry cans and collecting water to fill the pool in order to baptize the people. And the, the the students we took for baptism from the university, we transported them by border borders to the place. And after there, we gathered the water. We they were baptized from from nine a.m. They were baptized at at coming to four p.m. Seated there until we got a pastor who came and baptized. Uh, this tells you where we are going. This, uh, this is an experience. Uh, this is not one or two or three, many of this kind, because we are waiting for pressure and try and persecution. So shall we wait in times of persecution to, for, for a preacher to move from one place to another? We have the time now, we are wasting it. John 4.21, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when you shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Worship is when we put God's things first. We build the temple. We put God's temples, the people, first. When people are crying, it is time to go for, to, to go for, to, to go for their aid. To help them, not to not to not to put that aside and go for buildings. It bothers the mind. Someone is crying, has he has problems, someone is diseases is in the hospital, but no, 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 that time is not here. We are now going for for for, for constructing a building. Please, we are fundraising for the building, but not for this building. What a miserable life we are going to live. What a miserable church this will continue if we, we don't change. There are many of us who think worship is bringing and doing what we think is right. We are not the measures of right and wrong. It's the word and the spirit of prophecy, as Isaiah 8 puts it. It is time to, that we should build God's temple. Let us consider our ways. Our minds have been drawn to this. Worship is no longer in a place. It's not a building that we worship. The time is over for buildings. Stop that mindset. The time has come to work, to take worship as doing what God says. The time has come to stop thinking worship is in a building and calling buildings places of worship. This is why the temple was destroyed. So God destroyed that temple because the mindset of the people was towards these things. This should stop. These are not called places of worship. It's Catholicism calling that, that a place of worship. We are going to worship. No. Even when you're working, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it for the glory of God. And that is worship. As we have seen, the time has come to put this in practice. May God be with us and help his people to do what is right and build the temple. Let us consider our ways. Have we built God's people? Have we built our children? Have we built everyone around us? Oh, we are we're just in soliciting of money for buildings instead of God's people, their minds. As you buy a, a, as you buy a brick for a building, can't you buy 
a book, great controversy, or desire of ages, or, or in, uh, of the story of redemption to someone outside, out there, to, for that person to read. There you are building. How many times in church have we propagated the, the reading of, of these books? Is the library packed that people may read these books such that they can build and get ready for their savior? They are seated there, they have nothing to eat, their minds are empty, Christ needs us to prepare their minds. May God abide with us and help us as we continue to do what is right, to build his temple in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time. Thank you for this wonderful message you have had to remind us to build the temple. We are living in troublesome times, and you told us we are supposed to build the wall, even in troublesome times. Please help us to continue until you come for us. In Jesus' name, amen.